When you open up MuseScore, you're brought here into the Start Center, and this is a really good place to find all of the things to get your MuseScore session underway smoothly. If you've recently been working on scores, you'll see them here, and all you need to do is click on them to go back to where you left off last time. These are some of the worksheets that I've been working on recently for one of my classes. If you're brand new to the software, you won't see anything here, of course, and you'll need to create a score for the first time. And this is also what you'd need to do if you were opening the software with a new musical idea that you wanted to get down onto paper. So in this video, we'll look at the process of using the Start Center to get our score set up. Now, there's nothing that happens here in the Start Center process that can't be done other ways in MuseScore. But what's really good is if we're new to the software and not so familiar with where everything is, using this create new score option gives us the ability to get everything set up and get a basic score already ready for us before we even write the first note into the music. And so when we click create new score, we're given some options. Here we can write in all of the things about the piece of music that we're about to create. So I'm going to put, I'm going to call this piece Dave's tune and um, uh, an example score I'm going to put as the subtitle. See, I am the composer of this piece. Um, won't have any lyrics, so I won't put a lyricist in there. You could if you wanted. Um, and I'm going to say it's my copyright 2016. So that takes care of all the kind of titles and things that we need to just tell the person what this piece of music is and, and, and who wrote it. So once we've done that, we can just click next. And that brings us into some options into how we want to lay out the score. And what's great is that in MuseScore, particularly MuseScore version 2, there's lots and lots of options here. And probably we can find something that is very close to what we need for our score layout. We've got everything from choir layouts to brass ensembles to string quartets to orchestras to rock bands to big bands. So if you are new to MuseScore, chances are you can find something that is almost exactly or exactly what you need. If it turns out that you can't find a template for the sort of music you want to create, then you can use this Choose Instruments option. By clicking on this empty template here at the beginning, what you can do is actually build one for yourself using all of these instruments that MuseScore knows about. And sometimes that can be really powerful because you can get exactly the order of instruments that you need for your piece in exactly the right order on the page as well. So you might want a score that goes piano, violin, cello. And the way I would do that would be to select each of the instruments in turn and to put them into my score. So I said piano, violin, and cello. Now it might be that I want the violin and the cello to appear above the piano in the score. So we're going to have three different lines of music, or well, four technically because the piano has two lines, but one grand staff and two individual staves that show us the music that needs to be played. And I can also arrange them by using these up and down buttons. So by moving the cello up, we're going to get a score that looks like violin and cello and then piano. Actually, for my piece, I actually don't need any of that stuff. I'm going to use the treble clef layout because it's going to be a very simple piece of music. Once I've done that, I'm brought into this window, which is great because it helps me choose the key signature that my piece is going to at least start in. Of course, we can change the key of a piece and we can bring in a new key signature anytime we need. But this is a great window because it helps us pick out which key signature we need to start the piece. What I really like about this screen is that if key signatures are a little bit hazy, it's been a while since we've thought about key signatures and you can't quite remember which one is which, by hovering your mouse over any of the key signatures here, you'll see a little pop-up that shows us which keys these key signatures belong to. So I'm going to write my piece in E major. So if I click on that, that's selecting the key signature of E major. I can also choose to set a tempo for my piece. So let's say 120, that's a good speed for Dave's tune. So you can see that through this process, we're actually building in lots of the features of the music straight away before we've even seen the score appearing on the page. If I click Next, we get some more options. These are to do with time signatures and so what the meter of the piece is going to be. I think Dave's tune is going to be in 3-4 time. Obviously here we can put in everything including very obscure sort of more unusual time signatures like say 7-4 and we can change the other number in the time signature as well. So for compound time we could do something like 9-8. You've also got these shortcuts. You know sometimes we have common time and cut common time. Um, so if you would like to use those instead of the more standard 4-4 four, four, and 2-2, two, two, these mean exactly the same thing, but some people prefer those. And another really useful thing to get done at this point is to think, does your music have an anacrusis? 
Is there going to be an upbeat, some other, some kind of note that appears before the first beat of the first bar? And just for the purposes of this example, I'm going to put in a one beat anacrusis. And this means that the music score will create a bar that has only one beat's worth of space in it for this upbeat pattern. I probably want to set this back to 4-4 four, four for the purposes, or 3-4, let's say 3-4 and an anacrusis. So what we'll have is if I was counting this piece of music in, it's going to be 1-2 and we play on the third beat and then it would be the beginning of our three beats in a bar kind of feel. If you've got an idea of how long your composition is going to be, you can enter a number in here. Of course you can add more bars and we'll be looking at how we do that. We can add as much music to our piece as we want of course and this is just a suggestion to get us started. And that's the final part of this create new score process and if I click finish what you'll see is Dave's tune is pretty much ready to go. Like it's got everything apart from the actual music. We've got a, a clef, we've got a key signature, we've got a time signature, we've got a tempo indication, we've got the title and subtitle and composer information all ready to go and we've got 32 bars of empty space just calling out for us to write some music in there. So in the next video we're going to get acclimatized to the main MuseScore workspace, this place that we spend most of our time in the software and very quickly we'll be writing notes and all kinds of other things into our score.